out we just um, maybe three weeks ago. Oh. Hello. Okay. So Tech Wildcatters has a new kind of system how they're doing things with it's like a tier system. So um, Gauntlet. Yeah, but um, we just leveled up to level five about a month ago. Thanks. So, huh? Uh, just us so far, but I'm sure it'll change. We, well, we're the first class, so it's like you, our odds were pretty good, like of compared. No, well. <laughs> oh, you did? Oh, okay. Second. Okay. I just, anyway. So, uh, well, my name's Justin, and I'm with Celery Fulfillment. And we're a logistics company that helps basically small to mid-sized businesses by storing their products in our warehouse, packaging and shipping their orders in a personalized way that promotes their brand, and setting up or building out all of their inventory software that makes it extremely convenient for them. So I guess before we can backtrack a little bit of how we got started, and I wish we had some really great story of how I knew this macroeconomic trend was going to happen, and I was super brilliant. But we really just started by accident. We were um, selling excess inventory for businesses and selling our own electronic, electronics products on eBay, Amazon, Etsy, our own site. We just basically put software where it would sell across multiple sites all at once. And we had a customer approach us and said, hey, I don't really care about you guys selling stuff for us, but I would rather, uh, can you just store it for me and, like, and I'll sell it because you're not that great at it? And then... Uh, you know, just ship it out for me once it sells. And we're like, okay. And then we went to my co-founder. I'm like, well, what do you think we should charge? He's like, 400 bucks a week. Came back. And I was like, hey, I'll give you 400 bucks a week. He's like, okay. So then we had our first customer. And then we thought, well, maybe other people want this because at one time we were actually looking for a fulfillment service. And it was so complex. They actually have like calculators on the site so you can figure out your margins. It's insane. The pricing's so difficult. And they like, it takes forever to get back to you with pricing quotes. So anyway, we just, uh, we like went on Craigslist and put out a bunch of ads with no business name, no business website. And by the first month, we had about 3000 in revenue, which we thought was awesome. We were like, oh, this is awesome. This is awesome. We're like extra money. And then that's how we started the business. And we've kind of been growing ever since then. Um, so a big part of why we grow is that we're in a huge market. So in 2015, over $4.9 trillion dollars was spent in the U.S. retail market, but only 7.3% of that was actually done online. So we're in a huge market with lots of room to grow. So the big problems in our market that we face is personalization, that there's actually brands out there that make you pay them just to take their logo off, their, that, off of your box, which is kind of crazy if you're building a brand. Second is cost. There just really isn't a cost structure set up to accommodate smaller to mid-sized businesses, which is why we had such a difficult time like getting price quotes back for people because they just didn't have anything set up in place for us. And third is monthly minimums. If you're a startup getting started, typically your sales are close to one or zero because you're getting started. So a fulfillment service is a difficult option and you're really gonna have to be, uh, it's gonna be difficult to find one. So because we're in such a big market and because we solve really big problems within this market, we've been able to have month over month growth since we started the company just a little over two years ago. And yeah, thanks. <laughs> so it just, again, just, and uh, so we've had traction and a lot of the traction comes from, we've grown completely organically. We have, I mean, like we had no mark. We went to Tech Wildcatters. We were like, what's your marketing plan? We were like, we don't have one. We, don't, we haven't done anything. We just have grown from happy customer referrals, a lot of Craigslist ads, which can be sketchy sometimes, and then uh, and a lot of just Google search. And so just as kind of a case study, just to give you an idea of what we kind of do, smaller customer, 275 orders a month. And again, we're lower on costs just because there's not a pricing structure set up to accommodate them. Honest, honestly, the other competitors have just kind of turned them away. We're actually their third option which is, I guess, not really bragging. We were, they selected us just because nobody else would take them. Um, and so, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so our two biggest plays where we think that we really add the most value is one in the, in the inventory management side where if you, your team of five to 10 people already have an inventory software that you like, we can just plug that in with software that we're already using. 
which you're not going to get at other places. You're not going to go to Amazon and say, you know what, you guys did a good job, but can we just go ahead and take our inventory away and like have that software and take it with us? It's just not going to happen. Um, and also, if you wanted to build out your own inventory software, we can custom build it for you, or we can build it on top of other platforms just to make it easier. Um, and really, our biggest play is just our brand value that we add. And you can pick the type of box you want, but if you were starting an e-commerce business, you know, and you see these Dollar Shave Clubs and all these businesses that have, were recently in e-commerce businesses, Jet, which they're more of a marketplace, but that have sold recently. But their biggest thing if you're an e-commerce company is your brand value. That's really the one thing you have that can really separate you. And so which box would you rather have? Thank you. All right. That was good. There, there's something about his presentation style that is like genuine and believable. Like whatever you said, I was going to believe it. <laughs> Uh, well, thank something, you. Something <laughs> truth, truthful about you. Thanks. <laughs> hey, uh, Bill again. Uh, this, happens be, this happens to be my space. So. Awesome. Um, so how are you going to, um, how do you uh, dovetail or, or link up with other la with last minute providers? Um, obviously Amazon Prime works great, but how would you work into like an on-demand um, business so an individual could get it today because um, I would think that would be value when I was a pickup we talked to you guys about sure. you know linking yeah. together um, how are you gonna go out and market to those small businesses and say like hey we can do your warehousing and then your same-day delivery at a lower cost sure uh, you know same-day delivery for us hasn't been a bigger as big an issue up until these last few months when we've really grown um, at first the big thing was a lot of companies work with their own brand, so they're not necessarily competing with, they're competing with other brands, but the on-demand delivery is not as important to them, but we see that being a big, like, big thing in the future. And it would be just a basically, I know like Uber and I know, like, and I know you guys, like just with plugging their API into what we use is really the best way to do it for us, just we can map that out. And just probably partnering with a local pickup service, because that's just not really what we do well is getting it, we can get it out and ready and store it, but doing the delivery part of it is like we we can't do that so it's probably partnering up with another service to do that just through an api or just something else that's very similar i don't that kind of answer your question but okay okay so somebody that does e-commerce for a living um, how does um well how do you manage the shipping cost for um let's say one to three thousand orders a month compared to other people how many orders per month one to three thousand I can't hear the last part one more time. 1,000 1, to 3,000. 3, so basically, like most fulfillment services, what they'll do is they'll, uh, they'll charge you, you know, com they'll charge you retail rates while they get commercial. So, and they'll, a lot of times, which we have DHL e commerce and USPS, which, if anything, within, like basically it's under four pounds and goes, uh, in, or it's over four pounds and goes in this region, it always goes USPS. But a lot of these services don't use it because. They don't get a discount with USPS. Their, their, their discounts are with UPS. So we just pass that down to you. Like right now, we don't have, really have a plan to, to really profit off it. But, cause we, because we want you to stay in business because if you don't, like we're out of business. So that's what really getting the pricing down and just going through like, and it's a difficult question because it depends on how much your item weighs, how, like where you're shipping it, and what, how fast it has to get there. So we'll take those three things, and we just have software that they'll tell you each time what's the lowest cost option that meets, like how fast the item has to get there. So really that part's pretty simple. We just, when customer signs up, we walk them through that process and just pick the, pick the fastest one at that point. Over here. Up here. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks. So what is your long-term plan, and how do you, how, how are you gonna stay true to yourself. I, I could see this being a play where a bigger company comes and acquires you and screws the, the you know, the smaller company, sure. the mid-sized company. Um, well, we, we got, like, about a couple months ago, we had a company that tried to buy us kind of with kind of that similar mindset. They're like, we just want your customers. And, uh, but we really, the real value is in these mid to small size as you get out of this, you know, and you look at companies like Dollar Shave Club, look at companies like that that are just getting bigger and bigger by building their brand. So I think these mid to small is something that's not going to change. I think that's more of the future. So, I mean, I mean, our plan is to continue to do that. We have another, we have another warehouse we're moving in in like two weeks, which is a lot bigger. So we can accommodate bigger sellers. But, I mean, just really what we do well, our sweet spot is the mid to small customers. As they get bigger, 
I mean, we're working on things to get in place that we can accommodate them, but that's just not really, we're, that's just like our sweet spot right now we're going after. Yeah, so it, what, have you looked at reverse logistics and what, how much of your portfolio is, is tied to that? Um, like what specifically with reverse logistics? What specific, do you know? Uh, just figure with your size, that'd probably be more bang for buck, but bigger margins, so I'm just. Um, not a lot right now, but as we raise money, that's more and more what we're getting into. We're trying to, just to have increase our margins just a little bit, but I mean, right now it's just these mid-size warehousing, shipping out. And we do other stuff with like FBA, we're like in the process of becoming an FBA warehouse. So there's things that we do as well that are outside of the fulfillment process, but that's the main thing right now. Um, right here. Hey, as, uh, so I, we have three teams here, and uh, the, the hockey stick in May, can you tell us what happened? I'd like them to hear your, what happened. Uh, well, we had a customer. Four teams. Sure. We had a customer for another customer, which happened to be Tony Romo's wife. So then we got Martellus Bennett, who's an old cowboy, and we just went from there. <laughs> 